For the most part, we have described circuits with design tools such as truth tables and Carnot maps. These tools help us as circuit designers perform common design tasks and to document our designs. For example, we use truth tables to create an easily readable specification, but we use K-maps to help us create minimal circuits. However, both of these tools are design tools that help us determine what circuit we want to construct. In this lecture, we will introduce a new tool called the timing diagram, which can help us analyze our constructed circuits to debug any problems in the circuit design or enable us to reverse engineer a circuit by observing how the circuit behaves under different input sequences. Suppose that we implemented the sum bit of a full adder circuit. We could create the circuit with two XOR gates. If we want to test the functionality of the circuit, we would use a timing diagram. The timing diagram will show how the circuit's output responds to the circuit's inputs over a period of time. The circuit's output should always be a function of the inputs and should match our implemented Boolean expression. <clears throat> the ones and zeros by the variable names show that the timing diagram waveforms should be high for the high voltage ones and low for the low voltage zeros. In this case, the output should be 1 when only one of the input variables is 1, or when all of the input variables are 1. When we use a timing diagram to test the functionality of a circuit, we should design an input sequence that allows us to rigorously test the circuit. For example, this timing diagram displays an input sequence that systematically progresses through all input combinations in the same order that they appear on a truth table. If, for example, your circuit was designed with don't cares, you would not need to test those input combinations that you don't care about. This timing diagram displays the correct behavior. If, for example, this timing diagram displayed this output waveform instead, then we would know that the circuit we implemented was not correct. The timing diagram that I have shown you is also a little too simplistic. Real circuits need time to change from high voltage outputs to low voltage outputs. So a more realistic timing diagram would show the output delayed by a short amount of time, and not even necessarily uniformly delayed. Because the circuit output is delayed, we also need to account for what happens to the circuit before we enter our first variables. We should always mark this time as unknown unless the output is specified beforehand. Circuit delays introduce new design considerations, such as static hazards, information storage, and synchronization that we will discuss in other lectures.